Hello, my name is Andrew Thake from Minds and Money. Delighted to be joined today by Rachel Goldman, who's the CEO and Director of Paramount Gold Nevada. Delighted to have you with us today, Rachel. I am delighted to be here with you, Andrew, and I look forward to seeing you in person at the end of this month. Um, Rachel, for those who don't know too much about Paramount Gold Nevada, can you give us a bit of a background about the company? Absolutely. Um, maybe the best place to start is we are a U.S. domiciled and U.S. listed company. We're a micro cap, but we have two main assets that are also U.S. based. So we really are a U.S. story from that standpoint. Uh, that being said, uh, we have a management team and a board that are really spread out across both Canada and the U.S., and for a little bit of background, uh, this is actually Paramount 2, if you will. Uh, the first Paramount was called Paramount Gold and Silver, and it had been acquired by Core Mining back in 2015. And at that time, we spent out Paramount Gold Nevada, named such because we own the big sleeper property in Nevada, which is a historical producer, which I'll get to in a little bit. And then the following year in 2016, we acquired what has become our flagship project, which is called Grassy Mountain. It's a development project in Eastern Oregon, uh, which is also a very unique part of our story as we are permitting basically the first gold mine ever in the state of Oregon under their new mining regime, permitting regime, which came into place in the early 90s. So that sounds very interesting because we get a lot of, you know, um, mining companies who attend our events from the US, but not too many from Oregon. Can you tell us a little bit about the Grassy Mountain project in a bit more depth? Yeah, absolutely. So Grassy Mountain uh, is a project that's been around for, for many decades, has been known about, has changed hands. Um, I would say that the key differentiator between Paramount's ownership of Grassy and our vision for how it can be developed versus previous owners was that while the deposit itself sets up extremely well as an open pit, I think our team, as they engaged in the, the permitting effort, which again started a number of years ago, had a better understanding of the social, um, political landscape such that for the very first mine that's going to go through the permitting regime in the state, a higher likelihood of success with a, a small underground mine, small footprint, versus a larger open pit. Even though we're a very remote location, it's more about the sensibilities of, of stakeholders uh, who've never been through that type of process before and, and you know, what the ideas are around mining and such. And so, you know, this is this is what we've been pursuing. Fortunately for us, the geometry of the deposit sets up that there is a high grade core, which we'll be tackling from underground. It's not very deep, though. I mean, the, the lower grade mineralization of, you know, we have an excess of a million ounces there is about 50 meters from surface. And the higher grade, which is what's included in our mine plan now and in our reserves, is a, we call it just under 400,000 ounce core, about 6.8 6 grams per ton that will be uh, developed from underground. And fortunately for us, it actually kicks out a very economic, a small footprint, small production, um, but a, a very feasible project at that size, uh, which I would say also leaves a lot of potential for down the road should we get to a place where we feel that there is uh, an openness, a willingness to see us expand by an open pit, then there are a lot more ounces that could be produced by that method down the road. Okay, so that sounds really kind of um, interesting, a really unique um, project. What about the other uh, projects within the Paramount Gold Nevada portfolio? So as I mentioned, Grassy has really been our key focus for the past number of years um, on a couple of fronts. I mean, the economics of the project obviously are strong. Um, we just re-ran some, some numbers from uh, an updated feasibility study in Stanley that we put out in um, September of, of this past year, September 2022. So it's very fresh, includes all of you know the inflationary impacts that we've seen over these last two exceptionally strong inflation years. Um, still generates very strong returns, you know, anywhere the, the base study was done at 1750, but as we get up towards 1900, $2,100 gold, we ran these numbers at um, recently, I mean, we look at rates of return from the mid 20s to the high 20s after tax, and an NPV somewhere between 140 and, and call it $180 million, which is 
significant given the size of our company within probably today, we probably have an $18 million market cap. So, you know, there are not a lot of opportunities for very small companies to be able to have access to an asset like that. And, you know, for us, it was because we were entering into a jurisdiction where permitting is an unknown, hadn't been done, but the work that we did uh, established that there is a path to do it. And we're very much engaged in that process now, which is really, it's the crux of our story right now is, is the asset in Oregon and the, the different permitting milestones that we have coming up, the work that's been done, the type of collaboration that our team has developed with the, the agencies in the state in helping them also move through the first time of ever evaluating a project like this. So, you know, when you're the first doing every, anything, it takes longer and it costs more. And that's what we've seen happen over the last uh, number of years. But we're actually, you know, we're, we're really close to a significant milestone coming this year um, that I think will provide a lot of clarity to the market that, yes, Oregon is going to permit this mine. Because I think that's a lot of what's reflected right now in our evaluation. Uh, which we can chat on and, and other things is is that it'll never get done. But you know we're we're closer to the project and and the <laughs> process, and obviously you know we're we're big believers that we will get this over the line. Um, so that's really you know and, and if I spend the bulk of our time on on Oregon, that's the reason why. But uh, it, it's essentially taken up probably you know eighty or ninety percent of our budget and our time over the past number of years for that reason. Um, that being said, we do have another substantial asset in Nevada, which is obviously a much more well-known mm -hmm. jurisdiction. It's a past producing mine called Sleeper. Mm -hmm. uh, so Sleeper had a very storied history, um, kind of mid 80s to mid 90s, had produced from one very high grade uh, vein about, um, I think it was about 1.7 million ounces at about seven grams a ton. And so, you know, that was a very prolific deposit. And what we what we own now with Sleeper is a substantial land position that includes the past producing pit. So we have about forty thousand acres there. Um, in fact, we've we've done the reclamation work there, which is which is ongoing. We'll continue to do some reclamation work this year. We've won won awards for the reclamation work there, but it is also a, it's a, a substantial land position that's been uh, really virtually unexplored other than the areas directly surrounding that the old pit and certainly where that high grade vein um, manifested. So, you know, a longer term picture will certainly involve doing more work at Sleeper when we're in a position to both allocate time and, and capital there outside of, you know, continuing on the permitting path with Grassy in Oregon. Mm -hmm. um, you've mentioned your uh, team a few times. Can you tell us a little bit about some of your key team members and maybe a little bit about your um, background? Yeah, absolutely. So the, the, the bulk of the team, with the exception of myself, actually ran Paramount Gold and Silver, so Paramount One as well. And that was a, a much bigger company. So what we have are individuals who have experience, you know, from the, from the geology, from dealing with capital markets, re regulatory issues, and so on, um, who, who are very seasoned in that respect. So Glenn Van Trek is our president and COO. Uh, he is a geologist. He manages all of our permitting initiatives and certainly, you know, uh, drill programs, uh, updating our technical reports, the resource work that we're currently doing at Sleeper. So he certainly has his hands full. Our CFO, Carlo Buffone, was also with Paramount uh, One. So again, has, I would say, <clears throat> a much broader uh, range of experience in dealing with a lot of things and sometimes companies of our size uh, would have. Uh, and we have an extremely supportive board as well. Um, one of our big shareholders is Seabridge Gold, who you might be familiar with, another public company. Uh, so Rudy Franck is our chairman. And uh, we have on our board, we have a number, two, two Seabridge representatives, uh, Rudy Franck and as well the CFO, uh, Chris Reynolds, who's the chair of our audit committee. So we, we have a very good board from the standpoint of a diverse um, skill set. So engineers, geologists, finance and, and <laughs> capital markets people as well, uh, which has been extraordinarily helpful and, and supportive to a company, again, our size, uh, to be able to lean on them for that extra level of, of support. Mm -hmm. um, and who are your key shareholders? So in addition to Seabridge, um, we have about, I would say about 20% of our shares that right now are held by institutions. 
probably about 13% by insiders. And we have uh, about 68, 70% is retail. And I would say that's largely due to the fact that there are not a lot of US listed um, companies. So, you know, there's certainly an appeal to to some segments of retail that they can actually buy, a, you know, a U.S. listed name uh, ver versus having to come to a, a foreign exchange, you know, like uh, the AIM or, or the TSX um, for their for their gold exposure. Um, at the same time, though, I would say that the fact that we're U.S. listed also means that we don't fall naturally into a lot of the benchmarks or indices that we see, which tend to be made up more of Canadian listed names. That's where the familiarity is. So, you know, I think it, there's there's certainly some aspect of that, that like all things, you know, there can be a double-edged sword, but I think that's part of the reason why Paramount does fly a bit under the radar. And yeah. that's where there's an opportunity. Yeah, I mean, we've certainly seen um, the biggest increase in mining companies at Mines and Money's events over the last year has probably been in um, mining companies with US based projects. I think there's something to be said there that with the US, you know what's happening, you know the jurisdiction, um, and and the US has a, has like a strong track record of permitting and getting projects off the ground and getting things done. Um, and you'll also be attending a Minds and Money Miami event in a few weeks time. Is that looking to go and inquire some more uh, US based investors? Oh, definitely. I mean, we're, we're always looking for um, adding in new investors. And I think part of it is making sure that people understand kind of the nature of the, the cadence of what our milestones are gonna be. And, and the truth is when you're, when you're heavily involved in permitting, a certain amount of patience is required. Um, you know, already the permitting, and to your comment, the US is a, uh, a well understood jurisdiction, but each state is quite individual, you know, and so I'd say permitting a project in Oregon is obviously materially different than permitting one in Nevada. And, you know, the, the market's perception may be that it'll be a challenge to get it permitted or that it won't. But I think once we can show some definitive progress there, I think it'll be a lot easier for investors to be comfortable with Oregon as a, as a destination for mining. Um, so yes, we're always interested in adding in investors of any, any size or, or scope, institutional, retail or otherwise. But you know, I, I do always want to make sure that people understand that there are parts of this that are gonna take longer than we thought. We've already experienced that over the past number of years, but there is progress. There's very good progress happening. And in fact, we're, we're quite close to having a very significant milestone in the, the Oregon permitting process. Um, and for those who uh, want to go and check out Par Paramount Gold Nevada, what is your ticker? PZG on the NYC American Stock Exchange. That should be nice and easy to go and remember. Well, we look forward to meeting at uh, Minds and Money, Miami. We wish you all the best for 2023. That was Rachel Goldman, the CEO and Director of Paramount Gold Nevada. Thank you very much, Ray. Thank you very much for your time, Rachel. And thank you, Andrew. Look forward to seeing you.